On this week in Jacksonville, a student returned from captivity with only days to live. A shooter firing on members of Congress and their staff at a baseball practice. Tragedies, perhaps bringing opposing sides together in American politics. It's a total disgrace what happened to Otto. And what do you think about someone who comes back totally incomprehensible and with significant brain damage? What would you describe it as? It clearly indicates that he was mistreated uh, by the regime, which led to his death. It's a tragic, tragic circumstance. Former Congressman Ander Crenshaw weighs in on the Capitol conversations that may be happening right now following those tragedies. Plus, Florida Tax Watch delivering an end-of-session memo and where the organization thinks the Sunshine State succeeded or failed in 2017. All that on This Week in Jacksonville right now. Thanks for joining us. Our guest this morning, Jacksonville's Ander Crenshaw, former U.S. representative, and if we really want to go back a little bit, former Senate president in Florida, officially retired from uh, Congress, but willing to share some of his perspective with us this morning. When you announced a year ago that you were not going to run for re-election, uh, you said it was, it was time. You felt like it, it was time to move on. There was some speculation that maybe it had gotten so divisive there uh, in Washington that uh, kind of you'd had enough. Tell me some of your perspective, since we've got a new administration, new Congress, new Senate, there's been a lot of division. And uh, is it worse? Some people say it's worse than it's ever been. What do you think? Well, I, I saw it getting worse and worse my last five or six years there. Uh, people have strongly held beliefs. Uh, that's appropriate. Uh, people have differing views. That's appropriate. The great thing about America is you can sit down, you can exchange views, you can associate with who you want to, but nobody doubts the fact that we've gotten to a, a pretty low place in political discourse today. That's not why I decided to leave, but it's one of the things that I didn't like about Congress, the partisanship, uh, the vitriol, uh, just, just, just seemed to me that it was hard for people to agree in a, not disagree, uh, but always demonizing the other yeah. person, uh, saying not just that they're wrong, uh, but that they're bad people. And somehow it's got to start with each individual, a little humility to say, let's sit down and listen. I tried to do that when I was in Congress. You work across the aisle, you don't give up your deeply held beliefs, but you try to find areas that you can get along and work together, and we did that. Well, and what I've seen, and you mentioned the last few years, what I've seen is even within uh, the same party, if you're too close to the center, the other side, the extreme side is going to say you're not really one of us, and, and it seems like a lot of things weren't happening. Let's talk about something that's not really happening right now. We've heard uh, the Republicans who were uh, ushered in at the start of the year said we are going to repeal and replace when it come to the, uh, came to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, still nothing happening right there. Is it just that hard to make a big change or is it because of these other things going on a, a investigation here or a, a tweet there well it's all it's all kind of part of the, the big problem uh, but with health care it's a very very difficult situation it's about 20 percent of our overall economy and when you tamper with it uh, a lot of good things happen a lot of bad things happen most people would agree that Obamacare uh, hasn't worked the way it was supposed to work. You've got insurance companies that are pulling out. People can't find coverage. So something needs to change. And, of course, Republicans said for seven years we ought to repeal it and replace it with something that works. Uh, the problem is it's easy to repeal it. It's hard to find a way to replace it to make it better. Yeah. Would you be voting in favor of something new if you were still there in Washington right now? I, I, think, I think I would certainly have said it ought to be replaced. Uh, but the... Details are always where the problem is, and you got a House version, it's passed, now the Senate's coming up with its own version, uh, and nobody even knows what that looks like yet, so most of the senators are going to have to say, let's see what it looks like, and then I'll decide whether I'm yes or no. Yeah, one of the things that, that I alluded to a moment ago was uh, this partisan divide. Just more than a week ago, as, as we sit and visit today, uh, there was the shooting at the baseball practice for the Republicans who were getting ready for the congressional baseball game. Uh, obviously a tragedy, but what we saw in the wake of that was the actual game raised three times as much as it had raised the year before for some charitable organizations. One and a half million dollars that it, it raised. And I guess I'm curious, your perspective. A lot of the folks there said, you know, this is a wake-up call, and we realize we can't 
vilify somebody on the other side of the aisle anymore because it leads to maybe something that's violent like this. Is this a game changer, so to speak, and pardon the pun? Well, I, I think it'll make people think. Uh, in 2011, if you remember, uh, Gabby Giffords was shot. Uh, I was chairman of the Legislative Appropriations Subcommittee that funds all the individual offices. And there was a lot of discussion about uh, what should we do about individual members? Can we give them more security? More security yeah. And so that will be talked about. Uh, and you mentioned a wake-up call. I'd say, yeah, it is a wake-up call. But somehow it has to start with each individual. And, and one of the interesting things, Kent, about the baseball game, it's one of the few times that members get together from different sides of the aisle and, and play baseball. You get to know people on a personal level. And if you know somebody and you met their wife, you know about their kids, it's hard to stand on the floor and vilify them and call them evil. So if there was a little more of that, uh, there are other things. They have a softball game. There's a golf match between the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, those are times when members can actually get to know each other because the rest of the time, you're just so busy. Yeah. You're just so busy going to meetings and doing things, you don't have time to sit down and get to know people on a human level. Yeah, getting to know someone is a pretty important factor there. Final thing for our time together here, Otto Warmbier was a, a young man, uh, was convicted uh, in North Korea, spent 17 months there, and then when he came back, uh, was injured uh, to the point, or ill to the point, that he never recovered and he passed away. Tell me about... What you think should happen here, there's a, a lot of reaction coming. How should America respond to North Korea here? Because uh, a lot of your former colleagues are saying, we've got to hold that country accountable for this guy's death. Well, Kent, when, when I see those pictures, when I read about what went on, it, 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 it sickens me. I mean, it's, it's disgraceful. It's disgusting. It makes you angry. Yeah. And we know uh, that North Korea is, is an utterly corrupt regime. We, we know how they treat people. Uh, we know they're trying to develop nuclear missiles. They're trying to develop a, a, a missile that will get to the United States. So what this situation has done with this young man is just make a dangerous situation even more dangerous. And I think when you talk about murder, and I don't think that's too strong a word, when they murder an American citizen, then that demands some sort of response. And I'll guarantee you, uh, our, our country is trying to figure that out right now. Uh, and there'll, there'll be some accountability. It may be something you see. It may be something you don't see in terms of the cyber area. But we're not going to let North Korea end up uh, being able to deliver a nuclear device to the United States. We're not going to allow them to continue to mistreat people like they have. So something, something will happen. I appreciate your perspective. It's been too long, and I'm glad we got to catch up here and, and share some of your ideas uh, and, like I said, perspective with the folks here. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so from federal to Florida in our focus, a new guest from Florida Tax Watch. He's going to talk about uh, what they call the budget turkeys that they found. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Harold and Harold is a personal injury law firm that fights for truth, safety, and justice. That's what we do. If you feel your loved one is being abused or neglected, please feel free to give me a call. I will walk you through it. I will help you through the process and we'll make some good decisions. They have big. You really are a genius. Brains. I Googled how to do that. The Big Bang Theory. Tune in tonight to The Big Bang Theory at 9 and 9.30. Brought to you exclusively by Xfinity. Call 1-800-XFINITY today for a great offer. I had 35 sessions of radiation over the course of just under two months. The field of radiation they gave me is something unparalleled. Three weeks into radiation, everything went down. I couldn't eat because my esophagus was all torn up by the radiation. Your chest feels like it's on fire. There's almost no way to describe the amount of pain that I was in. Quitting is hard, but cancer is so much harder. Quit your way. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com. Subaru of Jacksonville kicks off the summer with the Model Year in Sales event. Take advantage of 0% financing on new 2017 Subarus starting at only $18,400. Drive out in a new Forester for just $175 a month. Or get a new Outback starting at just $25,006. Plus complimentary maintenance on all new Subarus. All of this and more during the Model Year in Sales event. Come experience the Subaru of Jacksonville difference. Dealer Raiders Dealer of the Year three years in a row. Drive a Subaru. You'll buy a Subaru. Every day on the First Coast, abused and neglected kids are in need of good foster parents. In these children's eyes, foster parents are real-life superheroes just by being there to help. 
Be a hero to a child in need. Visit foster-now.org. Pamper your feet with this at-home pedicure. I don't have time for that. My feet get so dry and cracked, I need serious relief. That's why I use O'Keeffe's for healthy feet. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked feet. Thanks to O'Keeffe's, I got my feet back. No matter what information you see through the day, with hundreds of channels out there, it's important to watch local news reported by local people you trust. That's how you define local. Being better prepared to explain why those stories matter to you and your family, making it worth your time to watch. That's our promise and our commitment to you every day. Channel 4, the local station. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And we're introducing you this morning to Florida Tax Watch, the mission to provide the citizens of Florida and public officials with high-quality, independent research and analysis of issues related to state and local government taxation, expenditures, policies, and programs. All right, so what does all that mean? Let's ask their leader, Dominic Calabro, joining us for the first time this week. I appreciate you uh, making the drive and, and being with us this morning. Uh, so, as I read uh, on the website, the purpose, improving taxpayer value, government accountability, citizen understanding. How do you do that? And are you truly independent or is it a partisan group? Absolutely independent. Uh, how we do it is through very thoughtful, high-quality research. We've got budget analysts, uh, economists, uh, tax uh, professionals that really look at state and local spending. But what Tax Watch is really very simply is independent eyes and ears of the Florida taxpayers. Whether they're middle class, lower class, upper class, business folks, uh, but all the people of Florida. And it was formed really from both uh, Democrats and Republicans coming together. Uh, it was a Democratic Senate President, Phil Lewis, with a Republican minority leader, Ken Plant from Orlando. But the founding really has a lot to do with Jacksonville. Mr. J.E. Davis of the, the Winn-Dixie uh, fame, uh, Ms. J.E., the Baker family, um, many, many founding right here. Uh, we've got a lot of wonderful members. Our, our current chairman is David Mann, who's a senior officer with uh, SunTrust Banks, and uh, we've got a great reputation, about near 40 years old. Yeah. We've always maintained our true independence because we really want to make sure people trust. Right. That when Tax Watch says something, as others have said, it's the trusted eyes and ears. And it's not just we say. It's what editorial boards, Republican governors, Democratic governors, Republican Democratic leaders across the legislature and the like. So we call it like we see it. It's truth to power. Tell me what you saw this year when it came to a legislative session and special session, mm -hmm. uh, because you guys do something called budget turkeys at the end. So what did you find there? Well, first of all, tax watch does some unusual things. We have a productivity awards, which will have occurred uh, this, uh, this past Friday. Uh, where we recognize some of the most outstanding government employees in the, in the Jacksonville First Coast area. So Tax Watch, because it was originally named after the Davis family, it's now called the Prudential Productivity Awards, we recognize, reward, and replicate excellence. So we're all about seeing what's good about our government, rewarding and replicating it and celebrating it. But what we did find out is that uh, when we do the budget turkeys, that's also very unusual. We also have a third thing that's very unusual, and that is identifying the, the most improved schools, elementary, middle, and high schools, and that teachers and principal leaders are the ones that are making that difference. They're keeping the best school, uh, school uh, 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 teachers there, and they're making the greatest progress relative to their expected performance. But let me get back to the budget turkeys. It's like in Washington, they call it pork. In Florida, they call them budget turkeys. It's not necessarily de derisive of the value of the project, but what happens is the legislature says, we're going to fund all these projects this way, and they fund these projects Summit. outside that, oh, I see what you're that system, okay? Or they step ahead. There's a five-year planning system, and they fund the first three years. This one was in the seventh or eighth year, and that jumped over. It's kind of un-American. So it's kind of like fiscal cop. And why is that important? Because over the years, Democratic, Republican governors alike have vetoed as much as 90% of the tax watch list. It's often feared. Uh, but that's not the purpose. It's just to provide accountability, make it transparent, and make it work better for the people of Florida. Of nearly $3 billion over the years have been vetoed. We're doing it 30 years, and that's almost two generations. Wow. This year, the governor vetoed about 61%. But also, the key is, the key is that there's some issues that they were going to try to have better standards. I, I appreciate what the Speaker of the House is trying to do, right. but you can't force it. It's a bicameral not a unicameral yeah. legislature, so you got to get buy-in from the Senate. I hope this time they will do that, so we'll have a more transparent 
a more accountable budget system. It'll be good for everybody. I, I've saved some time. We're going to keep talking through the rest of our show here. But before we get to this commercial, let me ask about uh, the specific to education funding. Mm -hmm. That was really contentious, even uh, toward the end and after this special session, sure. uh, where we saw protests following around the governor and the Speaker of the House and other parts of the state to say, <clears throat> yeah, you just pushed through this House Bill 7069, but we still want you to veto it, Governor Scott. Where does that land on Florida Tax Watch's radar? Uh, is this funded right? The right amount of funding? What do you guys think? Well, here's here's the challenge. It's it's really true. We, I would love to see us put more money in pursuit and funding. A lot of people would. And I think we know how to do it. There's a lot of areas. There's a constitutional commission that meets every four years. It's established in the Constitution. I had the, the benefit uh, and pleasure of having served on it, as other distinguished Floridians did too. Fifteen of us. We offered cost savings of nearly two billion dollars. About seven to nine hundred million dollars of it could have been implemented without any new spending. But the legislature and governor really didn't didn't try to do that. We could increase per student funding, teacher salaries and the like by hundreds of millions of dollars by taking less productive activities and putting into things that are generative, help school children, help pay our teachers better so we get better performance and better results. And uh, we're going to go to commercial in a second, but I, that makes me think, so why what's not? the holdup? Yeah, why, why don't we do Intransigence. that? Intransigence. Bureaucratic, bureaucratic intransigence. It's one of the things, everyone likes government productivity, but no one likes it enough to really expend their political capital yeah. to achieve it. Yeah, which, which has to be done. All right, so stay with us, and you stay with us. At least uh, two more issues we're exploring with Florida Tax Watch, tourism and business recruiting, and the business rent tax. So stay with us. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Celebrate summer at Pollo Tropical with our original family meal. Feed your loved ones with a whole fire-grilled marinated chicken, rice, corn, and rolls for only $12.99. Only for a limited time. Pollo Tropical. Chicken on the grill. This is a ClassAction.com consumer alert. Homes built before 1975 may have pipe erosion that can cause major water damage to your home. If you have water damage, warped floors, slow drains, or even a water-stained wall, you may have leaking pipes below your foundation, right under your feet. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Call or visit PipeLawsuit.com now to learn more. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. We, the internet-loving people, want super fast internet. One that downloads an HD movie in 34 seconds. Because who wants to wait for entertainment? We want it right away. So we can watch and enjoy the second we want to. Right, buddy? Can I have another juice box? You're going up so fast. Experience super fast internet, AT&T Fiber. for $5.69 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Celebrate summer at Pollo Tropical with our original family meal. Feed your loved ones with a whole fire-grilled marinated chicken, rice, corn, and rolls for only $12.99. Only for a limited time. Pollo Tropical. Chicken on the grill. Florida Tax Watch CEO and President Dominic Calabro with us this morning. So one of the big issues that we know you've been following uh, and you have some research on is the business rent tax. Why is this important for Florida? Well, what it is, it's, it's, well, it's a tax... It's a sales and use tax on commercial leases and rents. Florida is distinguished and it is the only state in the nation that has it. It adds nearly $2 billion of added costs. You say, well, let the business, they can handle it. Well, it means that they hire fewer people. They don't expand as much and as often uh, that, because they have to pay, you know, 7%, 6.5%, sometimes 7, 7.5% sales tax. And sometimes it's a double tax in itself. So 
it's a burden to capital formation. We ought to phase it out. We're the only one that has it. And it's distinguished in a very, very bad way. It also is something that has to get passed on to customers. So we, when we make our purchases, are ultimately paying that tax. Uh, as J.E. Davis of uh, uh, right. Jacksonville fame here and a great American has once said, you know, businesses don't pay taxes. They collect them. But ultimately, customers, employees, and stockholders pay it. So was there a move in the legislature this year to finally, scale those back a little bit? Finally, Kent, yeah, really. We're very appreciative. Tax Watch really took the lead on it a couple of years ago, uh, provided Governor uh, Scott with some very good metrics and fiscal information and econometric analysis that showed that this is one of the best ways to encourage capital formation in Florida. So we included it in his recommended budget for the first time in 2016 and 2017. We finally got... We we're hoping to get a full percent reduction from six to five percent, but it it fell just two tenths of one percent. But it's it's a start. Tax Watch led 15, 20 years ago in the repeal of an old thing you've probably never heard of it called the intangibles tax. It was two uh, two tenths of a percent on monies that you had at, in your brokerage accounts, and it was hurting a lot of elders and and small business yeah. owners. We phased that out. We want to do the same thing with the business rent tax. Yeah, but we've got a few more percentage points to get to there. If it's, yes. uh, yeah. So it, it yeah. went from 6 to 5 this year, or that's what you were hoping? We were hoping to, and it, it just went from 6 to 5.8. Five, that's not very much. It's, it's kind of a dumb number, but yeah. So let me, so It's let me a political you. compromise. Well, and, and so a, a huge part of the conversation the past six months has been uh, that Visit Florida and Enterprise Florida were very important to Governor Scott and the Speaker of the House specifically said we want uh, to phase those out or we want to see them, you know, demolished, unfunded, all that. Um, Enterprise Florida is about bringing businesses to the state. So does it, that seems uh, in opposition to this business rent tax. Yeah, I mean, you it's... Wanna, you want to invite yeah, people yeah, here, absolutely. but you're going to tax them more than any other state. Yes, that, I mean, that, that, that tax, anyway. poli tax policy is important. It's not the most, but it is important. Florida's got good good tax policy generally. And in no small measure because of the good work of Florida Tax Watch and our partners and responsive governors and legislatures through the years. But we got to get rid of this business rent tax. But the whole idea of funding the Enterprise Florida and the basically the old Commerce Department um, is to make sure that we're welcoming. And Governor Scott, like no governor maybe before him, really has made... This is mission, jobs, jobs, jobs. And he's done a really remarkable job of turning the whole view of Florida, which was beginning seen as anti-business, to much more pro-business. And it's improved. We're seeing a dramatic increase in private uh, job creation. So the Enterprise Florida is a model that does several things. One, it has some incentives that the legislature appropriated. And I'm glad that they made a modification to it. Rather than just give the money to companies and hope, uh, and even some good clawbacks and, and con uh, contractual obligations. What they did this time is say, look, we're going to uh, allow you to have an access road or some of the infrastructure that the state or counties or local governments, the people will always own. So even if Company X leaves, the infrastructure is still there. So I think that's a good improvement. With Visit Florida, Tax yeah. Watch has looked at that. It's a, a tourism promotion. Yeah, and let, well, let me set that up if I, if I may. You, Florida Tax Watch on the record in favor of the legislature for funding Visit Florida. Mm -hmm. And they did that at $76 million. You've encouraged additional funding for Enterprise Florida that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, why not, when it comes to that tourism component, why not do what the, the Speaker of the House wanted in terms of, hey, let companies uh, that are going to promote tourism, let them do that on their own. They can afford it. And that was kind of their view. Yeah, well... First of all, we've watched this for a long time. Right after 9-11, 2001, Governor Jeb Bush called me, and it was a real serious challenge because we were afraid that the whole economy of Florida could fall under. Yeah. We relied so heavily on it. One of the things I told him, and he finally gravitated onto it after some convincing, I said, uh, Jeb, you got to put $20 million into tourism marketing. you got to get, excuse the expression, but cheeks in the seat from... Uh, Europe and South America to come back into Florida. We had the moratorium on flights. That's no different than now. So we did that, and it dramatically changed Florida, weathered that better than almost any other state, and was more vulnerable. Two, we could look at a state like uh, Colorado that cut its, its uh, summertime tourism activities and promotion, and they fell from number one in, in, in certain kinds of tourism sector to literally almost dead last. Okay. And it took them nearly 20 years to come back. What's happening, Kent, is you have a very dynamic economy. So we were stuck at around 83 million tourists. And so we said, tax said we got to put some money up there. 
15 years later in 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, and finally began to push, push us past 100 million, then 105, up to 113 million people. So to keep at that level and, and growing responsibly, you got to do other things. You have to expand your airports, seaports, and your road systems, right. your public safety and all that, but you also have to promote right. and spend money. Tourism brings to us the benefit of not having a personal income tax or very high yes, tax burden right. on the residents. Right, something that, that people who live here in the Sunshine State, not visiting, who live here, right. want to see. And we benefit we tremendously. Wanna, yes. So this has been great. This is our first chance to get to visit together like this. I appreciate it. I know it uh, takes you away from where you guys are headquartered, but uh, you made time it's for us. It's great here. Great. And, Thanks uh, for the invite. Stuff. So thank you for uh, laying all that out for us, and we'll talk again if that's all right with you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Now, this week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. We're working on the next few shows, including next time. We've got the incoming president of Jacksonville City Council, Anna Brochet. She'll be with us and other guests as well. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching. We're on air on Channel 4 and online at news4jax.com. People get their news from News 4 Jax, Jacksonville's number one source for local news.